Hi friends, we are going to learn about APQP phase-wise inputs and output. Let's start. What is APQP? APQP stands for Advanced Product Quality Planning. In the manufacturing industry, as the complexity of a product increases, for example, a car is made of 30,000 parts including the smallest parts like screws, nuts, and bolts, so does the probability of error in the product lifecycle as work transitions downstream through the process chain in design, manufacturing, quality, supply chain, and other internal and external teams. This is especially true for new products and new processes. APQP is a set of standard procedures that documents the ability to produce a capable part with a reliable and repeatable process through a mutual understanding of the requirements and thorough risk assessment. APQP is part of the five core tools IATF 16949 compliant for effective quality management with PPAP, FMEA, MSA, and SPC being the other core tools. Top 6 Things APQP Identify any product and process risk. Develop contingency plans. Review designs for manufacturing practicality. Create and prepare suppliers for requirements and milestones. Validate a product and a process that satisfies customer requirements. Monitor ongoing production to ensure process stability. Why is APQP important? APQP benefits the OEM, customer, and supply chain, contractor, by having a structured agreement and procedure for product definitions and requirements. It provides a platform to have efficient and effective decisions and communication. This avoids any interpretation and confusion that may delay production, create a substandard part, and or increase costs. For OEMs dealing with multiple suppliers and their sub-tier suppliers, this provides the following. Product conformity across the board. Faster product time to market. Transparent communication with the suppliers. Measure a supplier's capability to meet requirements. For the supply chain, this outlines what's exactly needed to achieve part approval and compliance. Structured communication and understanding of the process and product requirements. Early identification of errors. Transparent communication with the customer. Happy customer, more business. APQP helps reduce risk by identifying problems earlier in the design phase since the cost of correction is much smaller earlier in the product lifecycle. Compared to the later stages such as operations and support, the cost of correction is much higher. Top 5 Benefits of APQP Better quality product through collaboration. Catch risks earlier in the life cycle to minimize delays. Consistent production runs with better lead times. Validation ensures product conformity across multiple suppliers. Suppliers are given better direction and expectations before cutting metal. When is APQP necessary? APQP is typically used for new product introductions, NPIs, when the OEM and suppliers are developing a new product and process together or when revising product or process changes after release. How the APQP process works. The APQP process is composed of a cross-functional collaborative team composed of members in engineering, manufacturing, quality, procurement, and other functions with a project team leader responsible for managing the planning process. The APQP process consists of five phases. Phase 1, planning. Phase 2, product design and development. Phase 3, process design and development. Phase 4, product and process validation. Phase 5, feedback and continuous improvement. Each phase is sequential, so like a pyramid, each phase is built on the foundation of the former then continues to build on the next. Each phase consists of inputs data and outputs deliverables. The output of one phase becomes the input for the next phase. Phase 1. Planning. Phase 1 is all about understanding the customer requirements and expectations. Phase 1 inputs. Voice of customer. Market research. Historical warranty and quality information team experience, business plan, marketing strategy, product process benchmark data, product process assumptions, product reliability studies, 
Customer inputs. Phase 1 outputs. Design goals. Reliability and quality goals. Preliminary bill of materials. Preliminary process flow chart. Preliminary listing of special products and process characteristics. Product assurance plan. Management support. Phase 2. Product design and development. Phase 2 verifies design feasibility and compliance. Inputs from phase 1 outputs. Design goals. Reliability and quality goals. Preliminary bill of materials. Preliminary process flow chart. Preliminary listing of special products and process characteristics. Product assurance plan. Management support. Outputs. Design failure mode and effects analysis DFMEA. Design for manufacturability and assembly. Design verification. Design reviews. Prototype build. Control plan. Engineering drawings, including math drawing. Material specifications. Drawing and specification changes. Phase 3. Process design and development. Log APQP Phase 3. Phase 3 verifies the manufacturing capability and measurement methods. Phase 3 inputs, from Phase 2 outputs. Design failure mode and effects analysis, DFMEA. Design for manufacturability and assembly. Design verification. Design reviews. Prototype build. Control plan. Engineering drawings, including math drawing. Material specifications. Drawing and specification changes. Phase 3 outputs. Packaging standards and specifications. Product process quality system review. Process flow chart. Floor plan layout. Characteristics matrix. Process failure mode and effects analysis PFMEA. Process instructions. Measurement systems analysis plan. Preliminary process capability study plan. Management support, including operator staffing and training plan. Phase 4. Product and process validation. Phase 4 validates the complete manufacturing process and final product. Phase 4 inputs, from Phase 3 outputs. Packaging standards and specifications. Product process quality system review. Process flow chart. Floor plan layout. Characteristics matrix. Process failure mode and effects analysis PFMEA. Process instructions. Measurement systems analysis plan. Preliminary process capability study plan. Management support, including operator staffing and training plan. Phase 4 outputs. Significant production run. Measurement systems evaluation. Preliminary process capability study. Production part approval. Production validation testing. Packaging evaluation. Product control plan. Quality planning sign off and management support. Phase 5. Feedback and continuous improvement. Phase 5 closes the feedback loop. Phase 5 inputs, from phase 4 outputs. Significant production run. Measurement systems evaluation. Preliminary process capability study. Production part approval. Production validation testing. Packaging evaluation. Control plan. Part submission warrant. Quality planning sign off and management support. Phase 5 outputs. Reduced variation. Improved customer satisfaction. Improved delivery and service. Effective use of lessons learned. Thank you friends.